From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, and welcome to our Ropecast special on Election Day. It's been a memorable Election Day, all right? Actually, I feel reminded after this American election of the special we did on Brexit, where nobody expected Brexit to come through. And now it's Donald Trump to be the 45th president of the United States. And again, with me here is David Knott. He is from the United States. Hello, David. Hi. Let me first ask you, have you phoned home yet? I have not, uh, although I have had several friends comment on Facebook that they are moving to Germany. <laughs> are you glad you moved? I am at this point, yes. <laughs> uh-huh, okay. It's still sad to hear you say that. I think what our listeners will want to know most is, how could this happen? Do you have any idea? Uh, yes, so my idea is that this election season has been completely about getting rid of the establishment. Both parties had a primary in which there was a popular anti-establishment candidate. Both parties worked to unseat that candidate. Um, since the Democrats only had two, they were able to keep the establishment candidate in front. But since the Republicans had 19 candidates, Trump was still able to come out of it. And so since Trump was the anti-establishment option and the only one, uh, as, as far as practicality is concerned... Even though many people didn't like him, they saw Hillary Clinton as the embodiment of the system and establishment. And therefore, um, I think that kind of led to the result that we see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Donald Trump, though, has been talking about a rigged system in these past few weeks. Um, if the system were really rigged, he couldn't have won, maybe. Or is it rigged in favor of him? Um, I was shocked by the results. Um, the polls all said Hillary Clinton had a 95, 98% chance of winning as, as far as rigged elections go. Um, I would say that the Republican Party, if there has been any manipulation, has probably been the perpetrator. I can't say much about this election, um, but we know from 2000 in Florida and 2004 in Ohio, uh, that voting machines aren't necessarily reliable. Mm -hmm. Um, But with this outcome completely in defiance of the polls, it's it's really a shock. Mm -hmm. We'd have to explain to our listeners that Americans do not vote on paper. They have not been voting on paper for decades. Uh, they go into a booth with a machine. What does that look like? It's actually different everywhere. So as for me, I've only ever voted on paper. Uh -huh. But for example, um, I've read that in 2004, Ohio was completely computerized. So you go into a booth, um, you press a button mm -hmm. for the candidate of your choice. It says your vote is recorded and then you leave. Mm -hmm. Though I did hear a report yesterday saying the new machines with extra security functions mm -hmm. uh, in Ohio had those functions turned off by the Republicans in charge. Speaking of Ohio, in the past 40 years, no presidential candidate came through who did not win Ohio. Could you explain that? Well, Ohio is one of the so-called swing states that presidential candidates campaign the most in. Uh, Florida is another example, Pennsylvania. Um, but Ohio, my guess would be, has a mixed enough population mm -hmm. that it leans neither towards the Republicans or Democrats, and so is decided in the end usually by only a couple of points. Uh, and so the candidates spent... I would say close to 75% of their campaign time in three or four states that are considered these battleground or swing states. Mm, okay. Now, we have the latest polls uh, published by National Public Radio here, and that shows actually that Trump leads Clinton by only 0.1%, which is not much. Do you think that Hillary Clinton or the Democratic Party will ask for a recount of votes? That is uncertain. The news I've seen thus far um, has reported that John Podesta, the campaign manager for the Clinton campaign, 
said there would be no concession tonight, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'd have to explain concession. Concession is um, kind of a formal way of saying I agree that you won and I lost. Um, and normally the losing candidate places a phone call to the winning candidate and congratulates them and officially ends the race. So they said they would not do that. However, I also read that she has done that. I read that too. She f allegedly phoned him. In fact, Donald Trump said so, that she had phoned him. Yes, and so that itself makes it somewhat suspect, but I'm not sure which news source to rely on there. Speaking of that, uh, whatever Trump says may not be be entirely the truth here and there. Another NPR article from today, or tonight, whichever you want to call it, states that, quote, if history is any guide, the new Trump administration will not be overly constrained by facts. Trump has shamelessly exaggerated the height of his buildings, the size of his profits, and even the number of people who showed up to cheer his presidential bid. Let's look into the future. Do you think he will be able to keep that up? As far as telling the truth, I don't believe that's one of his strong points. He often contradicts himself within the same sentence or two, stating both viewpoints of an issue and agreeing with both. And as far as I know, he's a pathological liar. So as far as what to expect from him in the future... What I've learned by watching this is that Trump cares solely about Trump, and so what he does will most likely reflect that. There's a quote from Trump I've read in the same article. Uh, he said the, to the Washington Post, I always say we have to be unpredictable, which is a rare thing for a politician to say, isn't it? It is, but then again, he's never been a politician. Mm -hmm. True enough. Let's still look at some of the issues. Do you think everything that he said during his campaign, there were a few issues that, were, that he was rather clear on, do you think they will come true? For example, building a wall towards or on the Mexican border, or for example, repealing Obamacare, which is the health care system installed by President Obama? Uh, well, I feel that some of the things he wants to do could be more likely than others. I don't believe there will be a wall erected. He would not be able to get the Mexican government to pay for such a thing as he says he would. My guess is he would strengthen immigration policies um, and try to deport many people. Obamacare, unfortunately, I think is one of the more likely things to happen, specifically because the House of Representatives has tried to repeal that dozens of times. Uh, and now that the House and the Senate are both controlled by Republicans, as well as having Trump as a president, uh, they could follow through with that if that's what they wanted to do, which would leave 20 million people who now have insurance uninsured. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, apparently the Republicans will retain their majorities in both houses of Congress. Donald Trump will probably be able to install new judges in the Supreme Court, which will probably follow his own agenda more than others. Plus, he himself will be in the Oval Office. What about something that Americans are very proud of, which is this so-called system of checks and balances? That means that different parts of the system check on each other and they balance each other out so you don't get extremist views in. One could say this might be a complete crisis of the system. Would you say so? I would agree. The idea behind it is that Congress would be able to check and stop anything crazy that the president would do and vice versa. Um, but America has become one of the most polarized countries in the world as far as parties working together. The two major parties won't get anything done together. And so with extreme agendas, mm -hmm. checks and balances goes out the window. Uh, you need a, a centrist consensus, people working, as they say, across the aisle. But we haven't seen that in the past eight years, and I don't think it will get uh, any better anytime soon. This would, of course, call for complete 
political reform of the whole American system rather than hoping for a win of either candidate. Yes. Um, what's interesting to note is that in uh, what's called the Gilded Age, before, somewhat before the First World War, I believe, there were high levels of inequality, and today we're reaching those levels again. At the time in the past when that occurred, people started doing um, what are called ballot initiatives, where voters would vote on issues as well as candidates to address what they needed. Uh, and this year we saw a pretty high number of ballot initiatives in several states addressing things like minimum wage or the legalization of marijuana. Uh, so voters took it into their own hands because they didn't feel that the politicians were giving those issues uh, enough attention. So that could be one direction that the country is headed in. Final question. You think this might be something that will eventually turn out well, or are you really afraid for your country? I'm afraid. Um, the optimist in me says people will realize what a bad mistake was made and then adjust to change it the next time around. But Donald Trump is so unpredictable and narcissistic, there's no telling what he'll do on a whim and what kind of damage he could cause that would make a repair to the system uh, unreachable. And that's what really scares me. Okay, well, um, I think we could go on and talk about this for hours on end, and probably people will be doing this all over Germany as well, not only in the U.S., and I believe our listeners may have something to say about this as well. So, folks, please leave a comment either on YouTube, there's always a comment section that is open, or you can also leave a comment on our podlock. We'd love to hear what you think, even if you do not agree with us. If you're a strong supporter of Donald Trump, we welcome any polite comments on our podcast or on anything else that is concerned with podcasts or the English language. Thanks for listening, and we will hear us again sometime soon. Thanks, David. Thanks.